What up guys, Seth here. As you can guess from the title of the video, you can probably guess why I called you guys here today. And my TV don't want to cooperate. Anywho, um, if you guys are a fan of Shokasugi and Revenge of the Ninja, I just missed the anniversary date by about, shit, a month. I didn't even realize it was the 40th anniversary. So I came across a channel today while I was on my break at work. And there's a channel called That Ninja Show. It's just That Space Ninja Space Show. And he's got a lot of good content. So I'll probably try to link his uh, channel in the description. You guys go check him out. Give him a sub. Um, big fan of shows just like me. Big fan of the old school 80s ninja movies. So got me thinking. I wonder where I can watch them now. Like I own the physical copies. But I'd rather have an HD version and just stream it. So no... No streaming services I found yet have had these movies except for Tubi. If you don't know what Tubi is, it's a free app. It's, the layout's a lot like Netflix, but it's free. You have an ad every now and then, but most of this stuff is really good. It's rare. Like, you got a lot of old, cheesy martial arts movies on here, and that just puts me in cheesy martial arts heaven. So, I'm going to zoom in right here. So, you guys see right here, Shokasugi, Ninja Theater 1, 2, 3, and 4. These were little small adverts for Shokasugi at the start of a lot of corny fucking kung fu movies. And what they would do, they would entitle the movie Ninja something other. But once you got past the opening uh, with show, it'd be a kung fu movie. Nothing against Chinese martial arts and kung fu, but if I want to watch a ninja movie, I want to watch an actual ninja movie. Japan with Japanese swords and whatever. I don't like being clickbaited in the 80s <laughs> to uh, watch one of those films. Now, we're going to watch the opening part of this just, just, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so, here we go. What's the amazing new iPhone 15 Pro? Uh, it's playing ads. Alright, well, that should go away just a second. Okay, we get the point. Add whatever. Go away. Alright, here we go. And he always be introducing a new weapon. I believe this is the comma. Or the little mini sickle, as it looks like. He's always in front of a shrine. He turns around. Hi, I'm Shokasuki. Anyway, you guys can watch it. Hi, I'm Shokasuki. Today, I'm going to introduce Kama. These are farming tools. Not only cut rice, but people too. People too, I love that. And he's like, yeah, fuck around and find out. Gently stabbed him, like, this is gonna hurt. Ooh, that hurt just looking at it. Oh my god. A cut to the balls or the dick or the comma. That's the ultimate fuck you. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the Ninja Tale. I'd like to introduce to you one of the finest Kung Fu movies. I hope you will enjoy it. Yeah, he always says one of the finer kung fu movies. So it's it's basically just clickbait from the eighties. It shows you one thing. You get like maybe two minutes of Shokasugi was that minute and forty three seconds or whatever, and then it goes to a corny kung fu movie. Anywho, so it got me in the mood. Fortieth anniversary of Revenge of the Ninja. Anyway, like I was saying, it's on Tubi now. It's free. You may have a commercial. Let me get back to it. But you go over here to that red box right there. That is Revenge of the Ninja. Hour and a half, 1983. So 40 years ago, this legendary film was made. And I still watch this thing at least once a year. I, I fucking love it. Always will. And Gracie's just playing under the 
Anywho, uh, so <laughs> I still have my little medallion. I found this after cleaning out my apartment a, f a few months ago. Can't remember where I got it. I still want to say eBay, but it says Shokasugi the Ninja. Nothing, nothing special, but it's special to me. Now, this doll or this figure I got on, on eBay a few months ago is very expensive. And all this stuff comes apart. I'm doing this with one hand. Obviously, the sword's not sharp. It's you know, it's a toy. But look at the detail they put into that thing. You know, it's got Skamaki work on a little toy sword, and he's posable in all kind of different ways. It's about a hundred dollars, so I keep him in this glass case. Kind of reminds me of the Shokasugi. Uh, I'm sorry, the Revenge of the Ninja stuff with all the dolls and the heroin and everything spilling out. But unlike that. If you bust them open, it's just gonna piss me off. You won't see hair and you won't see hair on everywhere. And it also caused me to break out some of my ninja toe. Uh, the Enter the Ninja one is still in the safe. I didn't feel like going and grabbing it. But the Holy Grail, as far as Shogasugi ninja toes, I mean, you know, that are legit functional, is in my opinion the Lie Sword, Louis Sword, Lee Sword, however you say. I don't want to get into that. This is a T10 blade. It is differentially hardened. He did make one mistake in his video about these swords. He does have one just like this, but this isn't an artificial hormone. That is real. It is heat treated. It is it is uh, differentially hardened. So, um, and there's subtle differences to the one in the movie. Of course, I mean, of course, it's a 40 year old movie. So in the original film, I don't think he had seppas, but they use black to kind of blend in with the suba. And this is just the source functional. This isn't going to be an exact, hey, cut that out. An exact, you know, uh, movie replica because it's meant, it's marketed as a functional sword. You can perform to Meshigiri with this. But that's definitely a real Hamon. I mean, that's not fake. Um, and they didn't have any Manu uh, Manukis in the, uh, in the movie, I think. And he mentioned the diamond pattern on the uh, the ska. And I want to get into that for just a second. And we'll put this up here. Hopefully it doesn't fall on me and cut my foot off or something. But in the movie, it's a prop he's using. So, of course, it's not going to have professional skamaki work. And he does have a point where the diamonds were thinner, like about like that something. So they weren't really diamonds. They were more like just small openings that showed the white samagawa underneath. I don't know if that was done intentionally or if that's just because the budget they had to, to, you know, make the sword for the movie. And that's just all they did. You know, they didn't really care about how the Skamaki worked or looked. But I'm happy that they made it look like a traditional katana. Gracie, try to do a video. Love you, though. But I'm glad they made it look traditional with alternating knots on the Ito. I, I like the cotton. It's deep, rich black, like I mentioned in the first time I talked about this sword. Would have preferred silk Ito, but I get where they were going. Um, and this is just, the black just pops in person. It just, the hamon and everything, when you look at it as a whole, it just, it's just beautiful in my opinion. So we're going to put that back down while my daughter is trying to sound like a dirt bike starting up. Hey, cut it out. Daddy's doing a video. Look at that face. I saw he. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Anywho. So we have the Hanway Kuga out for comparison purposes. As far as Ninja Toe, besides that one, I think this one gets the, you know, the, the award. My first one was done a lot better, and I really regret selling it. The Hamon on this one just is not creative at all. It's just they threw it on there. And you can tell it's scratched up pretty bad, even with tape over it, because the polish just is not that great on this sword. I think, at least in this batch, Hanway got kind of lazy. The Hibaki is scratched up a lot. And this sword is newer than that, than the Shokasugi. I've just, I haven't looked at it near as much as I had the Shokasugi, but just look at the, the deep scratches on the Hibaki. And I guess that's on the metal, uh, the iron, uh, yeah, that. <laughs> but the size still looks great. I mean, it still looks like the model one, but 
on my original one, the Hamon was a lot, a lot more active. Is this one just looks, it almost looks like it's wire brushed. They got so lazy on it, but, and uh, I'm gonna have to redo the edge a little bit. It's not as sharp as I want it to be. And I'm gonna try to buff out those scratches once I get it done, but I'm kind of at the point where it's like, why bother? But look, you know, look at the, uh, the Shinogi right here. It's just, the polish is just, just not where it needs to be. It should have been able to stand up to being taped up and being sharpened. Now, if you look at the, the Lysword version, gee, what do we notice is different, guys? <laughs> The polish, and it went through the same treatment. Still a mirror, no scuff marks shown. Habaki uh, doesn't really show anything. There's some black scuffing. That's maybe just that may actually be some residual from my belt slapping it up against that. I'm going to wipe that off, but. But pretty much, it, it, it just it's just a better sword. I mean, you know, it's just, and it came a lot sharper. And I know I use the Johan like a bunch of shit, but, you know, I mean, the proof's there. And if you look at the Maki work, Diamonds are kind of like not great, not proportional, not consistent. But you take a look at the sword, the other one, it's pretty much consistent all the way down the sky. Anyway, you guys can kind of guess where I'm going with it. Anywho, 40th anniversary of Revenge of the Ninja. If you guys have never seen it, check it out. It's on Tubi for free. I'm getting ready to watch it with my daughter after I put these dangerous objects up. And I'm going to enjoy some bourbon. And we're going to watch a movie with a bunch of blood and guts and heads and butts and everything flying everywhere. So you guys have a great one. Peace. Don't forget to check out that ninja show. I'll put the link down. And you guys have a great one. Happy fourth, happy 40th anniversary show. We love you.